Hey there, and welcome to the show. If you are expecting a baby, especially if it's your first baby, this episode is just for you. And if your little one is already running around and eating chicken nuggets and grabbing your phone all the time, it's still for you because you'll be able to think back on their very first days of their life and make connections between what you saw then and what you see today because babies show us from the moment they're born who they are and they even begin to show us the person that they're going to become. We're going to look at three amazing things that newborns are able to do the moment that they're born that nobody really even knows about. And stay with me till the end because we're going to wrap up with four of the most common myths about newborns. You're going to look at every newborn baby with new eyes after this episode. So let's get started. In the first three years, children grow and learn faster than any other time in their life. It's an amazing transformation. And guess what? Parents do too. I'm Ann McKittrick, the mom of three kids who's helped hundreds of parents in my 30 plus years in early childhood education. The key to success is understanding not only your child's development, but your own growth as a parent too, finding strategies so you can all flourish together. Welcome to Parenting in the First Three Years. Have you ever held a baby who's just hours old or maybe even a few days old and thought, how can a human being be so tiny, weighing less than the dumbbells I work out with, and yet be so whole and complete at the same time? Their little fingers, their little eyebrows and eyelashes, they have everything when they're born, but it's just so tiny. I remember years ago when I was an adjunct professor at a local college, we received into our home a very, very tiny foster baby. He was actually one of a twin, and we only had him for like a couple of weeks because they were able to find a home that could accommodate both babies. But anyways, he was just a few weeks old. His name was Desmond. And I was teaching, and I had this one class I had to teach. It only lasted about an hour and 15 minutes. And Desmond was too little for childcare. I needed to give him my full time attention, but I didn't have a sub for my class. And so I asked my supervisor, Can I bring him with me while I teach the class? I'll just have him in his carrier right beside me up at the front of the class. And he would pr- pretty much sleep anyways through it. And it was Perfectly appropriate because I was teaching the class child growth and development. So I remember I took him in that day and my boss, who was kind of a loud and boisterous person, I gave her uh, Desmond to hold for a moment and she took him into her arms and she sat down in her chair in her office and she just, this quiet just came over and she just said, he's just so tiny. There's something that happens when you hold a newborn. Somehow it just quiets your spirit and fills you with wonder as you look at those tiny little fingers and fingernails that have wrapped themselves around your finger. Of all of the early childhood education courses I've taught over the years, I think prenatal and infant development is my favorite because I never get tired of learning more about babies. So today I'm going to tell you three amazing things that Kind of the general public doesn't really know about newborns. The first one is that your baby is born instinctively equipped to make you love them and take care of them. And how is that? How do do they do that? How does this tiny little thing control you like that? Well, first of all, it's the way they smell, which is, you know, this newborn baby smell that we, we all know about. But what that smell is, is actually thought to be the mix of amniotic fluid, this vernix caseosa, and sweat glands. And the vernix is just that waxy substance that covers a newborn inside the womb and and it's, you know, cleaned off. Sometimes it's not so much apparent when a baby's born and other times you can see it real clearly. But, you know, I guess it's kind of the first glimpse of your baby's unique person smell, which we all have. But what is it about that smell that makes me want to love them and take care of them? Well, first of all, this smell, this newborn smell, it triggers emotional responses in us, enhancing a feeling of love and protection. It's really kind of believed to be almost a mechanism that's, you know, a part of the plan between a, a baby, a newborn baby and their parents to strengthen the bond between them and make sure that the baby gets what they need to survive and to thrive. This smell stimulates the release of oxytocin, 
which is often referred to as the love hormone or the bonding hormone in the brain of the parent or the, the primary caregiver. And oxytocin plays a real critical role in social bonding and promoting this nurturing behavior and enhancing the emotional connection between you and your baby. It also, you know, this smell provokes a sense of protectiveness. You know, this protective instinct is what we all have. If you were walking down the street and you saw a newborn baby, you would immediately go over and make sure that baby's okay because that's just what we do. We protect babies. But it helps the baby get all of their needs met from their feeding to comfort and safety and all of those things that they need in order to be safe and and well taken care of. Another thing that this smell does is it enables you to recognize your baby. You know, alongside with the way that your baby looks and the way that your baby sounds, your baby smell will help you identify your child. And, and in most circumstances, this isn't necessarily something that we need to do. But in the case, like in a hospital nursery or someplace like that where there's a bunch of newborns, it, research has shown that parents are able to pick their baby out just from smelling a t-shirt that's been on them or a onesie that's been on them. There's some really interesting research about that, so I'd encourage you to Google it. And then the last thing that this smell does is it it helps, it's kind of an emotional regulation for parents, and it helps new parents manage their stress and anxiety, especially in these very first days when it can just be so overwhelming as you're, you know, recovering from the labor and delivery and getting used to this whole thing of being a parent and then added to that not much rest. So the newborn smell is one way that they get us to love them. The second one is that the way that they gaze at your face. You know, a newborn's gaze is a powerful tool in this bonding and and connection between you and your baby. When your newborn locks eyes with you, it is not random. It is a, a an on purpose thing, not that they are doing it on purpose, but it is a something that your baby is born with this ability to catch your eyes and make sure that you are looking at back at them. And it has lots of great benefits. One is that it facilitates bonding and attachment. You know, when we fall in love with someone, we just love to stare at them. And that's what happens with new babies is we stare at them. They stare at us. And it begins this process of attachment and bonding that is so crucial for their social emotional development for the rest of their lives. And so in the first year, this is a very critical window for attachment and trust. And this gazing back and forth is one of the things that fosters this. Another thing that this gaze does is it encourages social interactions. You know, oftentimes babies will begin to, you know, they'll make these little faces and we just respond. We just are so delighted to see their different faces and we, we love to, to watch their little grimaces and all of those kinds of things that newborns do. And so it's the way that we respond is part of this social interaction that is taking place. It doesn't feel like much is happening because the baby is so <laughs> drowsy and sleepy looking all the time, but they are taking it in. Another thing that gazing does is it supports your baby's cognitive development because when they are looking around, they are taking in their environment. They are looking at your face. They are, you know, beginning to develop some visual and cognitive skills. And over time, it doesn't take that long. They will begin to recognize familiar faces, which is an important milestone in their cognitive and social development. Gazing can also promote so- emotional regulation. If your child is, you know, if your little baby is crying and upset and you hold them tight and you look them in the eye, this gazing will begin to help soothe them. And also it will help soothe you because you don't like to feel the sound of that cry either. And also gazing is the foundation for language learning. When your baby looks at you, they will begin to connect facial expressions and the movements of your lips and the sounds that your mouth is making and eventually the words that you're saying. This visual connection is one of the very early building blocks for learning language and, and the ability to learn to speak. So this gaze is much more than just looking at your face. It's actually a very important part of their cognitive 
and social and emotional development. The attachment and bonding that needs to happen in the first year begins at at birth or even actually before birth because you become very attached to this little baby that is inside of you as they are growing in, in pregnancy. But guess what? Of course, you have to be responsive. You have to take care of your newborn's needs. But they're pretty good at communicating to you how to give them what they need through the way they smell, the way that they gaze at you, and of course, through their crying and you know the, the way their little body moves around. You will be able to understand what they're communicating from day one. So it's one of the first amazing things that your baby knows how to do. The second amazing thing that nobody tells you about newborn babies is this. They are fully equipped to learn and respond to language at birth, even though they're not going to probably say their first word until oh, about 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 months later. This one is really amazing, and so much research has been done on the acquisition of language. First off, you know this already, I'm sure, because it, this is common knowledge. But a newborn is able to distinguish their mother's voice or their father's voice or whoever it is in the family that's been talking to that belly. They will be able to recognize or, you know, distinguish those voices over other voices very early on. But especially the mother's voice, because that's the voice they hear all the time. Every, everything that you say, your newborn baby is hearing that. And so they're very, very familiar with your voice the nuances of it, and that's the one that they are going to really need the most. I remember many years ago, I was visiting some friends who had just had a baby. It was their very first baby, and this was back in the day when people stayed a couple of days when they had a baby. But I had gone to visit, and I wanted to, you know, just see how they were doing and see the baby. And when I got there, they I, we visited a bit, and then they asked if I wanted to hold her, and of course I said yes. So I took her from her mom. And I sat down on a chair in the hospital room and this little baby who was so content before, she just started crying, right? <laughs> really crying. And I tried to soothe her, but she didn't want me. I said, I think she needs to hear you. I think she wants you. And so I handed the baby back to this mom and she just, you know, began to talk a little bit. And that baby just immediately stopped crying. And they were both amazed because they didn't really even understand this yet. The dad was sitting there and he says, how did that happen? What would happen? But, but that's what happened is this baby was already attached and familiar with her mother's voice. And that's what gave her comfort and peace, even in that first few days after she was born. So newborn babies don't understand specific words the way older kids do. But they're remarkably attuned to the sounds and patterns of language. And so here's what we know about newborns and language. One is that they can distinguish between different sounds from a very, very early age. And this means like even the difference between the word bat and the word pat, they would be able to distinguish that the sound of the very first sound of that word. And this ability is foundational for language learning. I saw this remarkable research study once where they had, you know, in infant research, this is how it's done. They, they put this cap on a baby's head with all of these, you know, place ways to kind of follow their brain activity. And then they put a pacifier in the mouth that is sensitized to, you know, they measure sucking, which is one of the biggest indicators for brain work. And what they would do, and this was done with like babies who were hours old. They just were giving them some words and this, and they gave them the words muffled as if it were, you know, like in the womb still, but they, they gave them words that were action words like verbs and nouns. And then they gave them words that were not important words in, you know, in a sentence, the words like the and then and those kinds of words. And the babies would respond to the nouns and the action words more than they would to the other words which tells us that they are attuned to even the parts of speech in the very, very first hours of their life. Another thing that's really interesting about newborns and language is that they can differentiate between their native language and a foreign language very early on. You know, they've been hearing the native language there the whole time that they've been in the, in the womb, and they show a preference for their mother's language most likely because they've been exposed to the rhythm and the sounds of that language in the womb. 
So even if they're born into a home where there's more than one language spoken, they'll respond more to the mother's language because that's the one that they are most familiar with. Newborns are very sensitive to the rhythm and stress and intonation patterns of our speech as well. And they can detect in your tone of voice, whether it's soothing, excited, or angry. They will respond to an angry voice with, you know, they don't like it, but they will respond also to a soothing voice, a calm voice in a way that is calming to them. So this response to the emotional context of our communication, even though they don't really know what the actual words are, is really interesting to me. Another thing that uh, newborns are able to do is they recognize repeated words. And those are the words that they will begin to, you know, understand first and maybe even begin to say first. So from day one, when you are, you know, for example, if you just talk about what you're doing as you feed your baby, and you're going to be feeding your baby all the time, right? Because they're going to eat about every two hours in these first few weeks. Just talk about the milk and how they're, you're getting the milk ready, you're getting the bottle ready, I'm getting ready to nurse you so you can have your milk because you're hungry. And so if you consistently say these words, then a little bit later, when they might have to wait a minute for that bottle and you use those same words, they'll associate it. They'll understand that you're talking about the fact that you're getting ready to feed them, and it'll give them just a moment you know, the ability to wait maybe 30 seconds or a minute to get that bottle or whatever. Anyways, it just helps them to know what's coming. And that's, you know, a really important part of cognitive development. And then another really interesting thing about newborns and language acquisition is that they are born with the ability in that little brain to learn any language that is spoken in the whole world. I've seen some really interesting research studies on this. and. But as they don't need certain sounds that, that they hear, then those, those parts of the brain are sloughed off. And that's why a little bit later on in life, it's so much harder to learn a language, especially one that's very, very different from your own uh, native language. And so this ability to learn any language is open in the first, I think they say like six to eight months of life, and then it begins to slough off by the time you're five. It becomes very hard, much, very much more intensive to learn a different language. Not that all of us can't learn languages. I'm not saying that at all, but that is how that part of the brain works. And so it is set wide open to learn language, the native tongue, and then it begins to really hone in so that the, the baby can begin to learn that language. So I think that's a really interesting thing about the way that babies grow in the very first year. So one more amazing thing that nobody tells you about newborns is they can imitate you. I know that you're familiar with an older baby or toddler who imitates because that's what they begin to do. They'll imitate the way that you talk on the phone. They'll imitate even the way, the way that you walk. They'll pick up a baby doll and they will, you know, say the same words to this baby doll that they have been hearing their whole lives. It's one of the most fun things to watch develop as your child grows. And it can also kind of backfire on you when they imitate the behaviors that maybe they should have been imitating that they've seen you do or words that you have said. But anyways, within the first few days of life, newborns can mimic facial expressions. If you stick your tongue out or open your mouth real wide, there's a good chance that your newborn will begin to imitate you. So just give it a try. It's really interesting. Another aspect of this imitation is that newborn babies will move their body in rhythm and sync with your language. I've seen this really interesting research study where a mom and a, a pretty young baby were in this lab and the baby was laid down like on a, you know, on a, on a bed, and, but the baby's arms and legs were totally free. And the mom gets down in the, in the baby's face, they engage visually, and the mom would begin to speak. And what we would see is that the baby's movements would mirror or synchronize with the rhythm and patterns of the mom's speech. And so when they tape it, you know, they, they're just doing it in regular, but when they slow it down, way, way slow motion, you can see that the speech and the baby's movements almost become like a dance. 
And of course, in this study, they would have the parents speak very slowly and then speak quickly and then, you know, slow it down a little again so they could really begin to observe the synchronicity. But what this shows is that your baby's not only attuned to your face, but also to the nuances of your speech. And this begins to help form this deep emotional bond. Another way that babies imitate us is through smiles. And, you know, I know that you've seen the pictures of a newborn baby that is smiling. You know, those are the best babies to catch. Usually it happens kind of in a drowsy state or maybe even kind of like a dream smile. And in these early, these very first smiles are caused by their developing nervous system. And it's not anything that they're intentionally doing, but it's delightful for us as the, as the adults who get to see it. And as they grow, these reflexive smiles will eventually turn into very intentional social smiles as their smart little brain begins to put it together that when I make my face do this, then it lights up the people around me and they begin to repeat that behavior. They'll smile, you smile, and then it just begins this back and forth communication. It's what we call it in child development is this serve and return when one person throws something out the other person responds and it just begins this back and forth communication. And, and this reflexive smile is part of this thing that begins as a reflex, but it eventually works almost like an imitation behavior. So those are the three amazing things. One is that your baby is born equipped and ready to make you love them. Second is that they are born ready to go with language learning, even though they won't begin to speak until they're about a year old. And then the third thing is that they can imitate you and that this imitation is very much a part of the attachment and bonding process. And so as promised, I want to just tell you four myths about newborns that are floating around out there that we need to debunk before we conclude this episode. The first one is that holding a newborn too much will spoil them. You know, sometimes we worry that if we hold a baby too much, then we're spoiling them or we're going to make them too clingy. However, what happens when you hold your baby and they, they hold, you know, they can feel your body, they feel your heartbeat and they, you know, it, it's very comforting to them. It makes them feel safe. It regulates their temperature and it promotes bonding with parents. Responding to their needs promptly, which means picking them up when they cry, it fosters healthy development. The second myth about newborns is that they're going to sleep through the night anytime soon. <laughs> the, they do sleep a lot. You know, newborn babies will sleep anywhere from 18 to 20 to 22 hours a day. They are not awake very much in those first few days or first few weeks, but they're going to wake up a lot because. Their stomach is about the size of their fist, and you see how tiny that little fist is, and they need a lot of calories in order to grow and develop. Their brain especially needs plenty of calories, and so they have to wake up frequently so that they can eat and get the calories that they need. All the while, they're also learning how to eat, learning this whole process of you know sucking so that they can get the nourishment that they need. Before they were born, they didn't have to do all that work. So that's why they wake up often, and that's why you just need to bust that myth that they're ever going to sleep through the night until they're a little bit older. The third myth is that newborns need to be on a strict schedule. There's, you know, there's different schools of thought on this, but newborns particularly, and I'm talking in the first three months of life, they really will let you know what they need. Their rhythms, their hunger, their sleep needs are going to change tremendously in the first, you know, in the first four months. And so for us to say, okay, this is our schedule. We're going to stick with this schedule. It's a little bit futile because their body is going to determine what the schedule is. And it's best if we can just kind of let go of that and follow them, follow their rhythms. And a routine will just naturally develop. That's, that's kind of how human beings are. We eventually will settle into an eating and sleeping routine that works. They will eventually get their days and nights right side up. And in the early days, it's just really important for us to remain very flexible. The fourth myth is that newborns need to get a bath every day. 
I totally understand this one because you're changing diapers all day. You're seeing what's going on and you think, oh gosh, I've got to give this baby a bath. But really, a newborn skin is very sensitive. And if we give them too many baths, it can strip them of their natural oils, which leads to dry skin. And so instead, a few baths a week with just some regular cleaning is quite sufficient and really all your newborn needs. I have a free little mini course on how to give your newborn a bath, but also how to give your newborn a top and tail, which is where you just kind of clean their their neck and their chin and their mouth and, and their head. And then also you clean their diaper area. And I'm going to put a link for that little resource in the show notes so that you can take a look at that. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you'll check out NurturedNoggins.com where you can find lots, lots more about that beautiful baby of yours. We've got so many resources for you there. And I'd love for you to check it out. NurturedNoggins.com. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.